Man from Snowy River by Banjo Patterson. This is a famous Australian poem. There was movement at the station for the word had passed around that the colt from old regret had got away and had joined the wild bush horses. He was worth a thousand pounds. So all the cracks had gathered to the fray. All the tried noted riders from stations near and far had mustered at the homestead overnight. For the bushmen love hard riding where the wild bush horses are. The stock horse snuffs the battle with the light. There was Harrison who made his pile and won the cup. The old man with his hair as white as snow. But few could ride beside him while his blood was fairly up. He would go wherever horse and man could go. And Clancy of the overflow came down to lend a hand. No better horseman ever held the reins. For never horse could throw him while the saddle girths would stand. He learned to ride while drove him on the plains. And one was there. A stripling on a small and weedy beast. He was something like a racehorse undersized, with a touch of team or pony, three parts of the red at least, and such as are by mountain horsemen prized. He was hard and tough and wiry, just the sort that wants to die. There was courage in his quick and patient tread, and he bore the badge of gameness in his bright and fiery eye, and the proud, lofty carriage of his head. But still so slight and weedy, one would doubt his power to stay, and the old man said, that horse will never do. For along a tiring gallop line, you'd better stop away. Those hills are far too rough for such as you. So he waited, sad and wistful, only Clancy stood his friend. I think we ought to let him come, he said. I warrant he'll be with us when he's wanted at the end, for both his horse and he are mountain bred. He hails from Snowy River, up by Kashiasko's side, where the hills are twice as steep and twice as rough, where a horse's hooves strike firelight from the bloodstones every stride. The man that holds his own is good enough. And the snowy river riders on the mountains make their home, where the river runs those giant hills between. I have seen so many horsemen since I first commenced to roam, but never yet such horsemen have I seen. So he went. They found the horses by the big mimosa clump. They raced away towards the mountain's brow, and the old man gave his orders. Boys, go at them from the jump. No use to try for fancy riding now. And Clancy, you must feel them. Try and feel them to the right. Ride boldly, lad, and never fear the spills. For never yet was rider who could keep them all in sight once they gained the shelter of those hills. So Clancy rode to feel them. He was racing on the wing, for the best and boldest riders take their place. And he raced his stock horse past them and made the rain to spring with the stock whip as he met them face to face. Then they halted for a moment as he swung the dreaded lash, and they saw their well loved mountain full in view. Then they charged beneath the stock whip with this sharp and sudden dash, and off into the mountain scrub they flew. Then fast the horsemen followed where the gorgeous deep and black resounded to the thunder of their tread. The stock whips woke the echoes and they fiercely answered back from close and cracks that beetles overhead. And upward, ever upward, the wild horses held their way where mountain ash and carriage all grew wide. The old men muttered fiercely, we may bid them all good day. The man can pull them down the other side. When they reached the mountain summit, even Clancy took a pull. The well might make the boldest hold their breath. The wild hop scrub grew thickly, and the hidden ground was cold. The wombat holds any slip of But the man from Snowy River let the pony have his head, and he swung his stock whip round and gave a cheer. Then he raced him down the mountain like a torrent down its bed, while the others stood and watched in very fear. He sent the floodstones flying, but the pony kept its feet. He cleared the fallen timber in his stride, but the man from Snowy River never shifted in his seat. It was grand to see that mountain horse ride. Through the stream he barks and saplings on the rough and broken ground, down the hillside at a racing pace he went. And he never drew the bridle till it landed safe and sound at the bottom of that terrible descent. He was right among the horses as they climbed the further hill with the watchers on the mountain standing saw him ply the stock whip fiercely, he was right among them still, as he raced across the clearing in pursuit. Then they lost him for a moment, where two mountain boys met, in the rain that final glimpse reveals. On a dim and distant hillside, the wild horses racing again, with the man from Snowy River at their heels. And 
He ran them single-handed till their sides were white with foam. He followed like a bloodhound on their track till they halted cow and beef and then turned their heads for home. And moaned and unassisted brought them back. But his hardy mountain pony, he could scarcely raise a trot. He was blood from hip to shoulder from the spur. But his pluck was still undaunted and his courage was fiery hot. For never yet would mount or occur. And down by Cachiasco, the pine clad bridges raised, the torn and rugged battlements and high, where the air is clear as crystal and the white stars fairly blaze, at midnight, the cold and frosty sky. And where around the overflow the meet that sweep and sway to the breezes of the rolling plains are wide, the man from Snowy River in the household work today, and the stockmen tell the story.